Hello, everybody. Live from Paris, I'd like to invite you to our short presentation about high world's cable monitoring solution. Uh, as you can see, uh, I like to start with the French German uh, uh, friendship in bleu, blanc, et rouge. And um, now I think it's the right time to enter into a short discussion what cable monitoring means. With me, I have Dan Keller. Dan, hello. Hello, hi. And um, as we have uh, already mentioned, monitoring system, we call it HIMON, stands for High Volts Monitoring. So, what's all about? Yeah, HIMON in general is a modular measuring and condition um, assessment uh, system, and it is, uh, can be used for both, for AC and for DC cables. So why was Hymon developed? What's yeah. the reason for it? The main, the main reason or the motivation to develop Hymon are the challenges of the energy transition. So we have, for example, in Germany, the uh, German corridor project starting, but also worldwide. We are talking about more and more HVDC cables to transport very high um, energy, high energy through long distances. This is one of them was the first motivation to develop something like that. But also the second one, we have a trend in uh, submarine cables. That means we have an increase of amount of submarine cables, but we have also an increase of the length of those submarine cables. So that means these two points, submarine cables and HVDC land cables, are the motivation to develop a new system for monitoring and for the quality assurance of these um, systems. Yeah, uh, especially our high voltage cable systems uh, for onshore uh, cable systems. There we also have some special requirements how to test this kind of our equipment. And there we will have then a second presentation on 1st of September. I already invite you for that as well. Yeah, so at the end, what is the monitoring system doing in detail? Yeah. In detail, or in general, to say we have two functions of the system. The first function is a fault localization. That means to find a fault if a cable breakdown occurs. And the second point is a PD monitoring. That, that means to find small um, signals, not what we will discuss about these topics, to find small signals um, in, the, in the cables in order to, to understand um, um, the condition of a certain uh, cable system. Yeah. Listen to this explanation. I have to state, yeah, uh, meanwhile, I'm 30 years in the industry and uh, monitoring or failure localization, that's something I heard already decades ago. PD measurement, something what follows me through all the things. Uh, I was working with transformers, switch gears, cables. So what is really now the special things behind? So maybe let's start with localization. So after a failure, typically you go back to the cable with the test source and then you try to apply again on high voltage and then you have a breakdown of the residual resistance and with this traveling wave, you can then identify the failure. So what is the system doing in difference? You're absolutely right, Uwe. What you, des what you described is a time domain reflectometry. That means the method behind that's um, the correct so, wording, so... And what we are doing, or what is the difference um, in, the, in the method you described is the time. Yeah? You described a method starting after a filter, applying a certain voltage and getting um, the result out of that. What we do with our system is we take the first, we take the first impulse. That, me that means we have the measuring units installed uh, uh, permanently at the cable, and if a cable breakdown occurs, we get the first um, traveling waves and can d uh, directly evaluate them. And so that means it's an, it's an, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it, you save time for determining the location of the fault. Okay, to summarize, you have the cable breakdown, you have a very steep impulse traveling wave, and you are already capable to measure this very first and original impulse of the failure. Okay, so that was the simple part. Now let's start with the more complex one, and this is the question of 
PD measurement and especially on the DC. So you are claiming 525 kV DC. Very interesting uh, approach. Then when I look into the standard um, 60 to 70 for PD measurements so, and use this kind of uh, process and technology, then partial discharge measurement under DC seems to be very, very difficult and uh, if not impossible. So that means if you want to do PD measurement on DC, then you have to do something completely different. And what is this about? Yeah, when, when we talk about the method of um, partial discharge measurement for the DC cables, we have uh, we have to we have to rethink everything what we know about partial discharge measurement. It's not a traditional partial discharge measurement what we do. Therefore, we also call the method true PD. It consists of two parts. In the first part, part we um, deter determine um, the um, transfer function of a certain cable section with a length of maximum 12 kilometers. This is the first step, and this we do like every one hour. And how we do it? We, we insert a certain, uh, or we inject a small Im impulse on the one side and measure it on the other side. And with that, we make the calculation. This is the first step. And the second step is, if a partial discharge, or that means if a small signal occurs, it, of course, it is measured as well by both of the two um, measuring units. And um, we use this uh, before determined uh, transfer function in order to recalculate the location of each impulse and to find also what is the height of a certain measured value. That means what we can, what we can evaluate at the end is not like an integral of all um, measured values, but what we do is um, we uh, evaluate each signal of um, the partial discharge. Okay, so I try to summarize. So normally you, uh, or you uh, measure a uh, reference value for the partial discharge called QIC, and uh, based on the new approaches that you really measure the high frequency structure of the effective discharge impulse and via the transfer function you can recalculate it. When we have now uh, a closer view to uh, the exponent we have here on Sigre, then we can see this structure with red and blue devices. These are the high frequency current transformers. And uh, to have a uh, little bit more detailed uh, information on that, I like to introduce to you also Yaroslav Chevchenko. He is the key brain behind the specific development we have done here, because that is nothing what you can find in any catalog. You have there to do also a very in-depth uh, research and development of this kind of equipment. Jaroslav, can you please join us? Thank you, Uwe. So here we have three HFCTs. So the main role of HFCT is to couple out the signal from the cable and uh, forward it to the measuring hardware. Um, uh, there are of two colors because with the red one we couple the we make the fault location and with the blue ones we couple out small signals of the PD discharges. Um, in principle, it's a passive device uh, that because. Uh, this choice was made uh, due to the rela reliability reasons because nothing should break in it because it stands at the live cable at the areas that may be inaccessible. Um, it was optimized for uh, multiple reasons and uh, it works under the main operational current of the cable that is uh, up to three kiloamperes for the units that we have right now. Um, it's a wide band sensor, so it uh, have the frequency band from 100 kilohertz to 10 meg. And uh, well, after all, it's just a very robust device made in Germany uh, that carries the precious PD signal from the cable to our hardware and further to the signal processing routes. That's all from my side. Thank you, Ryozov. Um only to explain it a little bit more in detail, so I hope we can also show this slide here. Uh, the typical application would be in, 
in this form for the um, terminations. Nevertheless, along the long distances, we have also to bury the uh, HFCTs, and this is then the installation, as you can see here. And uh, most of them will be buried so that we then have the uh, surveillance area of more than 10 kilometers until we need a new pair of sensors. So maybe Dan can join us again because uh, I still have two questions. I key for the application of such devices in high voltage applications and especially under the conditions of the TSOs is to have field experience. So my question is, what are the field experience you have already with the system and uh, what is now also the next steps for field testing with this kind of technology? So um, to start with, we can say it's the first it's the first field test already started like five years ago, um, using using the method of the troop of the uh, uh, TDR time domain reflectometry. That means that is long long uh, um, experience in in uh, uh, the method itself. So we used at the beginning uh, the voltage dividers for decoupling. And uh, we learned that the interfaces are, are, very, are very difficult concerning the um, decoupling. Therefore, we developed the red um, HiMac. So for the towers that we see here, we have field experience um, since more than one year for the blue one. That means we have a HVDC cable um, um, equipped with it. We have also several several um, um, DC cables. <laughs> we have several DC cables equipped with a with a red high mag, um, especially high, um, also um, um, submarine cables. And since um, this year, we also started um, the um, field test of an 110 kV AC cable um, in order to get also the field experience in these topics. Yeah, the 110 kV AC cable uh, field trial, this is uh, something completely new for me as someone with uh, a lot of R&D uh, activities in the past because it's the first field trial, the first field trial uh, which is that close uh, ah. to the factory that I can go by bike uh, to see then the installation in the field. So this is uh, something really good. Um, Okay, so as we are standing here on Sikri, then there's always the question, yeah, so why you have this exponent on, on Sikri? Yeah. Uh, what are the next steps for this kind of technology? So we have the paper, uh, which will be presented on Wednesday morning in the B1 session, explaining a little bit more the uh, physics and also the mathematics behind the system. Uh, now the question is, okay, having the exponent here, what are the next steps? Yeah, as you mentioned, the theory is now finished and we will also explain uh, in our paper and open the books how we make it. And um, during Seeker now we make the product launch. That means we uh, officially, offi officially offer the systems and we started as well also a more detailed explanation as you can find on our, on our website, highmon.highvolt.com, some information, some more detailed information about the explained uh, methods and also the explained um, product portfolio. Yeah, and you find also an, an app there where you can calculate uh, where when is it uh, uh, usable and and um, and make a sense to install such a system itself. So that are the next steps. And in the next step is that means it's like the market realization of this both um, products and to bring it into the real cables outside. Yeah, so when we are looking especially to our, the major HVDC 525 kV cable project, so then uh, we expect there also the installation of the cables as well as uh, potential monitoring systems in the next years to come. So therefore, we have then already uh, started also with the industrialization of these kind of devices so that we are able also to deliver then the first... Uh, HiMax on an industrial type tested uh, stage then from beginning of next year. Yeah, so uh, 
Thank you very much, Jaroslav and Dan, for your explanations here. I like to uh, repeat my comment that uh, if you are interested to learn a little bit more about how these very long cables will be tested, then I like to invite you then for our second session on Thursday, September 1st. Thank you very much for joining us here, and I like to give back uh, then to the communication center of MRTV. Thank you very much.